Hey guys, how are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of UPSC CSE 2019, and for this purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelim as well as mains. So currently we have six series that target your prelims and one series that target your mains. So friends, friends, actually I am today out of station, so I am recording this video in the car itself. So if there is any noise coming, uh, then please bear with us. Um, uh, we 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 are unable to uh, record the video. We will. I have don't have the time today to record the video of, uh, by sitting any uh, by anywhere at proper place. So friends, uh, let me tell you that uh, today I am announcing a new brand new series series of economy. So already we have six series in which we target different uh, topics like ancient India, medieval India, modern India, and uh, there is geography series and uh, polity series. Uh, but now uh, we are also starting this uh, economy series also so friends uh, uh, in the but we do in these series we daily cover 10 questions so we have allocated particular day to a particular uh, topic so for ex say for example for ancient india we have allocated monday so you will be doing 10 questions of ancient india on monday in similar in similar manner on tuesday you will be doing, doing 10 questions of medieval india and modern india you will be covering on Wednesday. So, so this in this way we have allocated the days so the sunday has been dedicated to this economy series but today i am uploading it because uh, I, I want to announce this series as soon as possible because uh, you are also demanding this economy series and in this series I will not cover uh, bullshit things everything will be will be totally uh, UPSC or oriented nothing can be of the thing of the sort like SSC like or, or anything so it is my humble request to the students who are, who are uh, only those students follow who are covering the UPSC syllabus so there there is no benefit of wasting the time so let's start our discussion the first question is how can two nations with the same money supply can have different gross domestic product so friends here the question is that the two nations that the, that have same money supply how can they have the same gdp so the first statement is circulation of same money supply happens differently in both economies second is labor productivity can be different in two economies so friends uh, we have to choose the answer that which of the following is correct so let me tell you that both of these are correct because uh, let me explain to you that for say for example two economies uh, say for example india and pakistan if india has 1 lakh rupees uh, for, for the for the matter of uh, for the sake of convenience we, we assume that uh, india has also 1 lakh and also pakistan has 1 lakh and then how can the gdp could be different the gdp could be different uh, by the first manner also by the first statement also by the second statement also for example if the india spends 1 lakh rupees out of 1 lakh it spends uh, uh, 20000 on infrastructure 20000 on health and 20000 on education and then other other as revenue expenditure then certainly we will be we will be getting we will be uh, earning uh, we will be generating capital goods so that will help in our uh, in help that will help in gdp to grow but in case of Pakistan, <laughs> there is a no normal thing that uh, out of 1 lakh they will spend 80,000 on army because they have to kind of, they have a kind of uh, uh, ob ob obsession with India that, that that is their main problem. So they will spend 80,000 on army but their GDP will not grow in this way because uh, the expenditure on army is, is not considered capital expenditure. It does not create goods and services. So it is a it is a kind of a capital expenditure. It, it is it is a kind of revenue expenditure. So friends, uh, the first statement is correct. Regarding the second statement, second statement is also correct because friends, uh, the labor productivity matters a lot. If you are in Pakistan and if you are unskilled, then uh, then say for example, if you are in India, if you are unskilled. Then there is no benefit of uh, of you people getting uh, getting twenty thousand or thirty thousand. But in India, for example, say for example, if the man force is skilled, then the same person who will who earns rupees thirty thousand in India will 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 provide more services uh, that that will have more value and will produce more goods that will that 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 will have a value in them. So the, in this way. Uh, the GDP increase because basically gross domestic product is basically the value of goods and services services produced in an economy. So the solution is B. Uh, sorry, C. Both one and two. So this is the solution of first question. So I have already provided you in detail explanation. So here is justification that uh, simply that I have told you that uh, money changes more hands will have great that uh, 
uh, more hands will have greater economic activity and where it is less will have lesser economic activity so regarding labor produce uh, producers i have told you that if the labor labor is skilled then it will obviously be more productive and if it is more productive then obviously the goods produced will be of more value so the first statement uh, first question is over i have explained to you it in uh, detail let's come to second question second question is as per classical economic thought if the buyers and sellers in each market take their decisions following only their own self interest then which of these follow so friends do not hear the point the classical economic thought so classical economic thought you know that it is associated with adam smith so if it is if it is associated with adam smith so you must be knowing about the adam smith uh, let me shift here uh, because it is covering the question so the a a option is market will inevitably fail b is markets will need to be corrected by government intervention c there will be need of an effective regulator d markets will function well so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is d that is markets will function well because uh, friends uh, as per the adam smith if the markets uh, if if the market is left free uh, then then it performs it in its best form and uh, and and the production and the markets uh, become self regulating and in this way a, a hidden hand comes into existence and which helps which helps everybody so markets will help function as per classical economy thought so the solution is d so here is justification it is also known as uh, non interventionist school uh, so it is also known as non interventionist school so you can uh, you, it is associated with adam smith and uh, adam smith says that invisible hand comes into existence so learning is here that keynesian economics says opposite of it so it says that if government uh, in the government of intervention is necessary for the well functioning of markets so it was also proved by the great economic depression of 19, 1920s uh, in the late 1920s when great economic depression followed after the first world war world war 1 um so so in that case keynesian economics came into place and it said that the policies such as government intervention deficit financing uh, deficit spending control of money supply and progressive income tax to, uh, help in countering the income inequality and also the market funds functions more effectively so this is about your uh, second question let's move on to the third question third question is uh, it is theorized that over a uh, long run exchange rates between any two Uh, national currencies are just to reflect the differences in the price levels in two countries uh, the theory would become invalid when first is there are barriers to trade and investment second is uh, uh, there is difference in productivity of labor and capital between nations so we have to tell that which of the following is responsible for for uh, for this uh, for for the uh, for the long run exchange rates Uh, to to adjust themselves to different uh, to to different price level to differences in price level so in this case if this theory will become invalid in which case so let me tell you friends that uh, the first is the correct uh, statement there are barriers to trade and investment then then obviously the the products will not be for example if we we in india uh, ban products of some country then the product, the 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 products will not be imported in india so there in, in in here in india there will be no demand of that currency so if there will be no demand of that currency so obviously we are of, uh, interfering in a kind of uh, we can say uh, uh, we can interfering in the market of uh, currencies so in this way uh, the 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 currencies fail to adjust themselves to the differences in price level so the answer is uh, regarding second statement friend second statement uh, the the difference in productivity of labor and dif between different nations it has no connection with the uh, adjusting of exchange rate so second statement is incorrect so the correct answer is a that is one only so let's move on to your next question the fourth question is D gdp deflator is a measure of uh, a is level of prices in the economy b international competitiveness of the domestic sector c industrial activity in the economy uh, d depreciation of production uh, ass assets so friends if you have read about uh, the uh, read, read read the ncrts or other basic concepts the books of the economy then you will be able to answer this that G it is basically gdp deflator is a measure measure of uh, kind of level of prices in the economy so the solution is a sorry friends here i have 
pressed uh, 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 the solution is a that is it measures the uh, level of prices in an economy so basically it is the ratio of value of goods and services an economy produces uh, and in a particular year at a current price to that price is prevailing during any other reference year that that is called base year so when when you take the ratio of it then you get the idea that what is the actual inflation rates in economy because this this tells you uh, the, the the if for example if, uh, if the ratio comes out to be 2 ratio 1 then uh, then we can say that uh, that in this year for example for 2019 it comes uh, uh, to re for, to, to, with respect to 2019 to, to, for example we have taken the base year 2014 so when we compare 2019 and 2014 so we will take the ratio the ratio of the uh, economic commodities in particular year at current prices then it if uh, then the if ratio comes out to be 2 ratio 1 then then we can say that the prices of goods and services have doubled uh, by the by the base year that is inflation has doubled by uh, the product uh, the prices has ra uh, have raised themselves by a value of 100 percent so the uh, correct answer is a that is it tells the level of prices in economy so basically it is uh, the ratio and it gives you basically the inflation rate and uh, it is a comprehensive measure friends uh, because uh, in wholesale price index and consumer price index we basically measure the uh, price of commodities uh, 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 which are basically which which constitute the basket of uh, of of particular particular section so they are not comprehensive measure but gdp deflator deflator is a comprehensive measure of measuring your inflation rate so the correct answer is a so already i have explained to you let's move on to the fifth question fifth question is a country will necessarily be economically developed if first is it has large reserves of natural resources second it has a large base of working age population so let me tell you friends uh, that uh, uh, if you can if we consider the first statement then first is incorrect because uh, having large reserves of natural resources doesn't guarantee you the development status because uh, the countries in Africa there are a lot of countries in Africa that are resource rich and in West Asia also and in Latin America also but they are not developed it is ultimately the technology it is ultimately the uh, the, uh, the way in which we use those resources so first is not necessary uh, necessary it is not necessary for be for becoming economically developed take the example of Japan so it has very uh, little natural resources but but we can uh, it is one of the developed nations of the world so industrialized nations of the world Regarding second statement, friends, uh, second statement is also not necessary. The it is it is if if a country particularly has a large base of working age population, it is called demographic dividend. That, that the country has large group of working age population that can work and can earn their living and can 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 uh, can put uh, can can make a vicious uh, can can make can make a virtuous cycle of uh, of growth and uh, demand. But but that working age population doesn't in itself make an economy developed until and unless that working age population is, is scaled until and unless it is not uh, or it, it is employable then 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 we can't say that it will help in the development uh, or it, it will guarantee a developed status to to the current country so for example India has large uh, large uh, large section of people that are in working age population. So, so near about 64% people are in working age population, but we are we are yet to be developed country. So we, we in, in in this debate we also the articles come on new, in newspapers that uh, in order to reap the benefits of demographic dividend, we must scale our workforce. So the necessary condition is scaled workforce. So both one and two is not uh, not correct. So which of the following is correct? Uh, none is correct so the solution is D so the this is the answer and here is justification so I've already explained to you in detail let's come to sixth question sixth question is an economy generally sacrifices consumer goods consumption goods in order to produce more capital goods why is it done so friends uh, generally we see that an economy uh, compromises the, uh, the the consumption goods over capital goods so why it is done so first the first is to generate long-term growth second to avoid uh, inflationary situations so friends let me tell you that both of these statements are correct because if we if we uh, invest our money in consumer goods for example take for example if we uh, consume consume services or for example for that matter we consume uh, 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 we, uh, we consume the goods that are of high price then we will not have money to invest into other things 
and this in this uh, the, the other things could be the infrastructure that is necessary for the economy to grow so in that case uh, we will we will be hampering uh, uh, we will be hampering long term growth so generally the consumption goods are sacrificed over capital goods and also friends uh, it is also consumption goods are also uh, uh, sacrificed because uh, to avoid the inflationary situations because for example if you are living in an economy and uh, if we are consuming say for example a lot of lot of uh, beverages and we if we if if we don't invest in in the machines that in the machine and the technology that can make beverages then after some time if uh, the consumption will will increase and it will it will it will overshoot and this will lead to inflation of the commodity because we are importing that commodity we are not self manufacturing it but in case but in to, in order to con con uh, control the inflationary prices we have to make investment in its technology so that we can produce it, uh, 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 it the, that same good by by uh, by uh, we can become self reliant in that good so that the the, uh, the the supply prices do not shoot due to the rise in demand so the correct answer is both one and two are correct that is consumption goods are comp compromised over capital goods both to avoid both these situations so both one and two is correct so the solution is c so here is the explanation i have already explained to you in great detail about it so there is no need of uh, uh, going into further detail let's come to your seventh question the seventh question is why rbi is called lender of last resort so rbi is called lender of last resort so why it is called so so he, this question has been asked a is it the it, if commercial banks refuse to give loan up to a poor a, he can always turn to rbi for approval b it acts as a guarantor for banks and extends loan to ensure the solvency of the later See all heavy infrastructure projects that cannot be financed by individual banks are financed by the RBI. D. It is the last agency to assess the credit worthiness of borrowers. So let me tell you that the correct answer is B. That is, it acts as guarantor for banks and extends loan to ensure the solvency of the later. So the correct answer is uh, before you that is uh, B. So why it is correct, friends? Let me tell you that uh, 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 RBI is called lender of last resort because it could provide guarantee to these banks. So, for example, if you have deposited the money in bank, so if you are not sure that uh, that 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 bank will will give it will repay you money, then you will panic and then you will uh, all will go simultaneously into the bank branches to get your money. But but, but bank has always less money uh, uh, in liquidity than 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 deposited in it. So in that case, the banks may may become bankrupt, and this can lead to crisis. So in that case, to to solve this uh, crisis, the RBI acts as a lender of last resort because it provides a guarantee uh, for banks that we I, that I will provide you the money if you run short of money. So B is the correct answer. So I have already explained to you in great detail. So that's why it is called lender of last resort. So, so here is the explanation given to you that the total amount of deposits are always less. So this is about this question. Let's come to eighth question. The eighth question is which of the following reduce accumulation of capital stock in the economy? First, depreciation of assets. Second, uh, spending on infrastructure rather than capacity building of financial institutions. Let me tell you friends that the first answer is correct. Uh, first statement is correct depreciation of assets because ultimately capital stock is the stock of capital that you have it with you to produce goods so if there is depreciation taking place in the assets that is they are becoming redundant then then obviously your stock will decrease it is natural thing and regarding second thing if we spend on infrastructure then capacity building of financial institutions then it will increase the stock of capital goods and it will not decrease because infrastructure uh, the spending in infrastructure is considered as a capital spending so it will lead to more more accumulation of capital stock so if we lay down uh, roads we build a uh, railways and uh, we build uh, other things and uh, airways for example so it is a capital expenditure and it will lead to accumulation of capital stock in the economy and so because as it will it will increase the trade and commerce in the economy so increasing trade and commerce ultimately leads to high demand and high demand ultimately leads to more production of goods and services so ultimately there will be uh, there will be more production and uh, the, the, the capacity building will take place
the infra sorry the the capital stock accumulation will take place so the answer is a that is one only so the solution is a so i have already explained to you it in great detail so let's move on to the ninth question the ninth question is the term base effect is often used while uh, while discussing inflationary trends in the indian economy it refers to so friends we use a base effect term repeatedly in economic surveys also uh, and in our uh, the in our uh, other things that we uh, that with that our ministry of finance covers uh, and and different policies they they repeatedly mention of base effect so what is it so the question is relating to it first option is uh, a segment wise inflation trends b is cost push push in inflation c is demand pull inflation d none of the above so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is none of the above because uh, uh, the uh, the term base effect is basically say for example let me tell you that you are living in 2019 so you in case take the example of 2018 so for example if your particular good uh the has raised its price has raised in 2018 to a great extent for example in 2014 it was of rupees 40 but in 2018 the price is, uh, increases suddenly and and the price becomes 90 and in this year uh in 2019 it becomes of rupees 100 then ultimately which which year has the more more potential effect on the on the inflation the year of 2018 in which the major price rise in price took place so that is uh, that is called base effect so the 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 effect of the year which contributes most to the uh, the rise in the price of a particular good so this is this is the correct answer so d answer is Uh, is is its correct answer because base effect is nowhere mentioned here so the solution is d because impact uh, the this base effect i have already told you that uh, this shows you the rise in price level in the previous year over the corresponding rise in price levels in current year so basically it gives you the uh, trend that uh, it which particular years has a year has a major uh, contribution to raising the inflation so the solution is d let's move on to your last question last question is why do policy makers stress on high saving rates in indian economy so the question is why do policy makers stress on uh, high savings first investments are financed by savings second savings discourages inflation causing consumption expenditure so let me tell you friends we have to choose the correct answer which of the following is correct so let me tell you that friends uh, both of these are responsible policy makers stress on high, high savings because uh, because the investments are financed by savings ultimately the money you deposit in bank the the savings that you that you deposit in banks the banks use that money to spend on infrastructure projects because other uh, also private agents take loan from uh, take loan from uh, banks so that they can start different industries or uh, their own uh, individual venture so in this way uh, the investments takes place so your saving enhances the money with the bank and bank then lends it to the other uh, customers who who may be spending it on the investment so investments could be increased so second thing is second is also good because if you save more then you demand uh, if you have money for example then if you instead of uh, uh, spending it on consumption goods for example for different demand of goods if you save it then 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 the demand of goods will not be that much because you will not be demanding the good you will be saving your money so if you if the demand is not there then obviously the price rise will not take place so to control the inflation as well as to finance the uh, infrastructure both uh, these things are are kind of stressed by the policy makers so the solution is both one and two so this is all about your today's lecture friends if you liked it please like it share it with your friends and uh, if you have any suggestion you can tell me in the comment box i will certainly consider your suggestion and lastly friends uh, uh, if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these discussions then you can whatsapp us at this number 8968426481 so certainly there will be a nominal charge that we will be charging for if you want to subscribe to these pdfs uh, because we also have to earn our living our friends i am let me tell you that i am a i am a person that that, that that tells everything in clear manner so i am not not faking myself here uh, so i'm not I, i i don't like to be fake because ultimately everybody here has a interest if if i'm teaching you then obviously i have certain interests but that's why i'm teaching you 
so it is not it is it is a kind of fake it it will be it will be a kind of fake thing if i say that i have uh, i want to do welfare and all these things i certainly do there are a lot of students that uh, that uh, that that have that that study uh, my notes for free but they but if, if to avail that facility you have to tell me that you are from a, you have to prove me that you are from a poor background so we we provide uh, we provide the notes also for free to those students who prove themselves successfully that they are from poor background but in case you are from a well of section then you have to subscribe to our notes because ultimately this is the reality and this is practical thing uh, and uh, and uh, I don't just want to be fake. So if you like this video and if you want to subscribe, you can WhatsApp uh, us at this number. And lastly, friends, please subscribe to our channel and uh, and do not forget do not uh, do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get all the important notifications relating to updates that we do on our channel for the purpose of UPSC CSE 2019. So thank you, friends. Thank you very much.